Welcome everyone to this big clash between Vidit Gujarati and Gukesh. These are two candidates of Indian chess and two of the finest players of the country. They are playing against each other in Prague at the Prague Masters 2024. This is round number three. This is also the first time that Vidit and Gukesh will clash against each other after becoming candidates. In fact, not really. They played against each other recently at Tata Steel Vaikanze. And that game had ended in a draw. But I guess this is their second classical game only. They have played a lot of rapid and blitz, both exchanging and trading blows to each other. I guess Gukesh has a small plus there. Their classical game at Vaikanze ended in a draw. And now we are here with Gukesh having the white pieces, opening the game with 1e4. With it, as always, in his meditative pose before the game, getting into the groove. What is his move going to be? He generally prefers to be solid and so e5 looks very likely and he plays his pawn to e5. More than anything else, this game is also a clash of styles. Gukesh is more creative, he likes to attack, he likes to play with the initiative. Vidit is more positional, he's also very very solid. Off late, he has also become very creative but let's see what happens in this game now. The opening, of course, chosen by Vidit is very solid. He can play the Petrov, which is what Gukesh played with him in Vaikanze, but he goes instead for knight c6. And now Gukesh, will he go for the Italian or the Spanish? He goes for the Spanish. The Rui Lopez is on the board with bishop b5. And Vidit goes for the Berlin with knight f6. A very solid opening because you can go into the Berlin endgame with castles. But I believe Gukesh wants to keep more juice in the position and he goes for d3, also known as the anti-Berlin. The bishop comes out to c5 and of course we cannot really win the pawn right now after take, take, knight e5 because of queen d4 and you have a double attack. So once Gukesh castles, now this becomes a real threat of taking the knight and taking the pawn. So with it protects it with his pawn coming up to d6. Main moves here are c3. With the idea of d4, Gukesh thinks for a bit and plays knight to c3, which is kind of getting the game into four knights territory, because now you see all four knights are developed here. With it, quickly castles it out. Now, one idea can definitely be to go bishop g5, pinning this knight, but the other one is to go after this bishop here with knight a4 and that's exactly what Gukesh has done. He's telling with it that I'm going to take your bishop pair. Like if you go bishop b6, I'm just taking this and claiming I have a small advantage because of the bishop pair. With it says, not so easily my friend, I'm going to go knight d4. He goes, moves in with his knight. If you take the knight, he takes with the bishop. And if you take my bishop here, I will take your bishop. Gukesh takes it. So now, Taking on c5 is not a good idea because after I take the knight, I have the bishop pair and also the f4 break. So that's the reason why Vidit takes knight b5. Now Gukesh has a very strong move here. Can he find it? Not to bring his knight back because then c5, knight d4, black is completely fine. But a4 is the move and he finds it. Whoa! Gukesh plays this very nice move. The point being that the knight really doesn't have a great square to go to. And so after you take, I'm going to take back with the pawn, opening up the rook. That's exactly what has happened. The rook has opened up on a1. Now we have the e5 pawn hanging. So you can actually go and pin this knight. But with it goes for queen d6. The same position uh, before queen d6 was reached in the game between Nepomneshi and Jordan Van Forest many, many years ago. But what a move by Gukesh here, knight h4. This completely changes the dynamics of the position because now f4 is what Vidit is going for. Rook d8 was played. Vidit may have wanted to go c4, but after b3, the bishop comes here and attacks this. And that's the reason why he got his rook here. Queen e2 against the move c4. So that now the queen is outside this line of fire. And now bishop g4 played by Vidit. An interesting move provoking f3 so that in future this diagonal opens up. So f3 is played by Gukesh. And also this knight no longer can go back to the f3 square. So interesting clash of ideas here. Bishop e6 comes in. 
but Gukesh is building up an attack with his knight here, bishop looking here, the rook getting activated here. This can become very, very dangerous for Vidit. And the move b3 played. Queen d4 check does not win the rook because bishop can come out. But Vidit goes queen b6. Now, for Vidit, he's threatening c4. Check here. And if, king, uh, if you play c4, then the d3 pawn becomes weak. So Gukesh says to Vidit, take my pawn if you want. But I am going for an attack. And Vidit actually boldly takes the pawn. This is really very, very bold play by both sides here. Now, Bishop g5 by, by Gukesh has to be played. Yes, he plays it. So now he's threatening maybe to take, maybe to play f4 with one, two, three, four pieces in the attack. And the queen is a little bit offside. Vidit, unperturbed, goes a5. He wants to play a4 and create play on the queen side. Now, f4 can be a very, very powerful idea. But queen e3 played, which is equally good. He wants to take, take and move his queen to h6. Gukesh should focus on the attack. With it, plays a4 again. Not really caring for Gukesh's threats. This is amazing play here. And now, Gukesh takes the pawn. Rook takes pawn. Very likely to happen. And what white can do next is not to trade the rooks. Yes, here, maybe just play rook b1. Once the queen moves away, let's say rook b4, you keep your pieces, go for f4, taking your queen at 6. It would be a huge attack. But instead, Gukesh loses focus. He takes on a4. This is not the best idea because after takes, queen takes. Yes, he will recover his pawn back after queen takes c5, but he has lost the focus of the attack. And now with it can actually try and defend with queen d4. Very powerful move. Yes, queen c6 played. Nice move there. Because if queen takes e5, there is queen takes c2. d3 is weak. So Gukesh now goes into an endgame. But what a position he had where he could attack. Yes, his position still looks good. Because his pawn structure is bulletproof here. While black's pawn structure is mangled. But still f4 played here now with it has to defend a bit carefully because clearly if he is not uh, careful these pawns can become weak the rook can eventually enter in he takes the pawn and now gukesh thinking for a bit he takes bishop takes f4 attacking this pawn on c7 now one of the quickest ways to fight for a draw is to play c5 c4 but with it, first makes this passive move. These passive moves are not easy to make because these players understand passive moves are not good for them. But they do it because with it wanted to go c5, c4. But Gukesh has stopped it with bishop e3. And now he goes rook a8, trying to enter in with rook a2, putting pressure here. The knight comes back from h4. It did its job. It actually made the entire game so sharp with the last move that it had played knight h4 now coming back to fight for the end game advantage knight e5 knight d4 with it gets in with his rook attacking the a2 c2 pawn this pawn needs to be defended with rook c1 i think it's an important one yes rook c1 played and now there is a small little threat because bishop f4 will put pressure here on c7 so with it needs to be a little bit careful about it. He goes knight d7. But has he considered anything for bishop f4? Because that can really put him under pressure. And Gukesh plays it. Bishop f4 attacking c7. And you really don't want to play rook a7. Because with then knight d4 attacking here. Things can get very nasty. He goes c5. Gukesh chops off the pawn. And says to with it. What is it that you want to do? Well with it goes h6. How is it that you lose a pawn and then make this calm move? Well, it turns out Vidit wants to hit with f5 and then knight g5 would be a very irritating move. So he plays at 6. Gukesh goes king g1. The only reason why Vidit is still having a fine position here is because of the opposite colored bishops. That gives this game great drawing, drawish tendencies. f5 played and now Gukesh goes back knight to d2. But the pawns are getting traded, the pieces are coming off, and now with it can take the pawn on e4. Gukesh can either take back with the pawn or with the knight. I think he'll prefer to take it with the knight here. And then, yes, he's still a pawn up, 
but with it is liquidating this at such rapid pace he's just completely getting rid of all the pawns c4 now played and so the remaining pawn that white will have will remain a weakness gukesh tries to play this aggressively still by going d4 but the only issue here is that bishop f5 now hits the knight and if the knight moves the pawn on c2 is falling so with that vidit has equalized this quite well he's done it quite comfortably although on during the game i'm sure he was a bit nervous there because gukesh had an extra pawn but vidit really showed character today the thing is when gukesh was coming all out at him with his pieces he did not back down he did not go on the defensive he in fact created counter play on the other side of the board by playing a5 a4 and i think that worked out for him quite well now gukesh is trying still for something if he can get king e3 d5 king d4 then there's something to play for but with it also bringing his king in king comes to f7 and now gukesh will he bring his king forward thing makes makes the most sense to get his king to e3 here and then knight f6 is what very likely gukesh will do he can also think about king e6 but then there is d5 and king comes in so slightly careful there before rushing with your king knight f6 makes a lot of sense now the idea is king e6 knight d5 can gukesh push his pawn to d5 threatening king d4 yes he does it he pushes his pawn and if king d4 comes in there's something to play for your king is more active c4 pawn is slightly weak but with it finds this classy move bishop e4 because if you take here i have knight d5 check winning here oh winning the pawn back and gukesh takes it and offers a draw because now after knight d5 king d4 knight c7 king c4 it's just a draw the players have agreed to it it was a fantastic fight here by both the players although the result was peaceful the game definitely was not i would say gukesh missed a golden opportunity there to attack better he could have played f4 at some point with it asked gukesh if you would like to analyze uh there they talk a bit and maybe they'll analyze for a bit trying to understand the nuances of the position this will be a mouth watering clash in canada toronto the candidates which will start in roughly a month from now but for now the game between gukesh and vidit at the prague masters has ended in peace